Uh, hi guys, uh, welcome to this new uh, Angular lecture. Today's uh, agenda is this one. We're going to look first into um, yeah what Angular is. Uh, we br very briefly look into why uh, we use uh, or why Angular uses uh, TypeScript as a programming language. Then we're going to look into the um, MVC uh, approach or MVC design pattern, and um, so we understand a little bit uh, about the the Angular uh, framework. Um, then we talk um, uh, when we dive into the language itself uh, or the framework itself, better said. We're gonna continue then with the modules and the components and data binding, which are uh, very important and basic uh, concepts while developing an Angular uh, framework. So uh, yeah, let's get started. When you look at the formal definition of Angular, this is what you find on the on the Angular docs. Angular is an application design framework and development platform for creating efficient and sophisticated single page apps, the uh, SPAs that we talked uh, uh, last time. Now, um, well, uh, yeah, that's the formal definition, but uh, you probably uh, will forget very soon if I ask you well, after one or two months what the, an Angular framework is. So for that purpose, uh, you could just uh, remember this line and uh, that would be also fine. So uh, if anybody is asking what, uh, what Angular is, you can fairly say uh, it's a JavaScript framework for web apps. And that's it. Now let's talk about TypeScript because um, that is uh, the way to go in, uh, in Angular. In the past, in previous, previous versions, especially in the beginning, um, Angular was using uh, pure JavaScript, and now they move towards uh, TypeScript, and for a very good reason. So um, some of them you can read it here. But important is that uh, important thing is to know that uh, TypeScript is actually a superset of JavaScript. So whatever JavaScript uh, code that you see is by default the definition of TypeScript. Okay, so that's that's first. Uh, um, Angular compiles TypeScript to JavaScript. So that that process is also called uh, transpile, and uh, the reason is because browsers. Um, they don't actually have a specifics for TypeScript. Why? Uh, what they have implemented is JavaScript. So um, Microsoft uh, had a yeah a very good idea. I said like you know we're gonna develop a uh, we're gonna make a, uh, some um, features being uh, supported by uh, the, the browsers out there, and so developers can code in a neat in a better way, and 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 we can just transpile to JavaScript. So every browser out there uh, does not need anything new in terms of uh, yeah new language or something like that. So that's kind of the the magic that the, the engineers move of. Uh, yeah, Microsoft here in this uh, TypeScript uh, programming language. Uh, one thing to mention, and why it's actually uh, being named TypeScript, is because it's strongly typed. And um, in the contrary, JavaScript is a very flexible uh, programming language. And um, yeah, that is uh, basically uh, uh, the main uh, difference between those. So if you are familiar with languages like uh, C Sharp or uh, Java, for you, it's going to be very, very easy to uh, transition from um, those kind of languages. Uh, rather than coming from um, yeah just uh, flexible or prototype based uh, programming uh, languages like JavaScript itself. Um, well, I, I'm gonna leave, leave this uh, link up there. It's developed by Microsoft, and uh, they have a nice documentation uh, that you could uh, just uh, go dive into and learn TypeScript. TypeScript. The, the reason I put this uh, it's in parentheses is because uh, it's outside the scope of the, the whole Angular course. Uh, but what I'm expecting is uh, you go dive into this uh, resource, the link over here, and study TypeScript. Uh, on your own. I think uh, uh, in a couple of days you will be uh, already um, answer, understand the, the major uh, concepts and be uh, ready to uh, already create your awesome application. So yeah, that is, um, that's about TypeScript. And now we are going to uh, really talk uh, and start diving into the design pattern model view controller. And in previous courses, we already talked about this uh, uh, software design pattern. But uh, the reason we're taking uh, this back again is of course to refresh uh, in, uh, um, the idea in our minds, and um, yeah, Angular framework is also uh, using this uh, uh, MVC. And you know, when, you, when we talk about MVC, the major um, idea here is separation of concerns. So, and therefore, you can actually have your software um, in a more uh, modular way, and therefore, you can maintain your, your software uh, over time. It's more manageable, uh, especially when you're building a, a, a yeah enterprise uh, software. So that you definitely need a, a um, separation of concerns, so you know what you. Uh, where to go in case a um, something occurs, right? Now, um, this is a general uh, design pattern, but there are many, many uh, variations uh, of this uh, pattern uh, being used by different uh, tools and technologies out there. Angular claims uh, to be a model view view model, and that's a variation of uh, of this uh, MVC design pattern. We're not going to dive into the many variations because, uh, quite honestly, there are uh, many discussions going on uh, out there in which. Uh, 
which one is best or, or how exactly a, a, a specific variation should be named. So there are many discussions. Uh, some, uh, of them, some of those are not really reaching consensus. But the important thing here is understanding what we're talking about, separation of concerns. And if we understand the model view control, then you can go and, and, and dive into more detail into these variations and um, yeah, understand what they are talking about in each uh, variation. So uh, let's start on the left. You see the UI and view, which is uh, basically uh, the DOM, the HTML um, uh, document being loaded on a, on a browser. And that's our view. That's basically what the user sees, right? Then on the lower um, and in the middle, we have the uh, controller. And oh, how I like to see it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an awesome uh, manager. Controllers are awesome managers. Um, I have actually found this a uh, nice graph because uh, it is not depicting only in an abstract way what the, what the model uh, does, but also depicts in a very concrete way what we're talking about on each a concept, the model, the view, and the controller. As you can see, the view is depicting the, uh, the, the DOM. The uh, controller basically are the definition of the classes that you or, or where your logic is going to be uh, defined, and that's uh, mostly uh, your job. And uh, when we talk about the um, model, uh, we're talking about basically the objects being instantiated from whatever classes you have uh, uh, defined. And those objects, as soon as you run the application, of course, they're going to um, be in uh, memory uh, RAM. Um, yeah, once you have these uh, uh, yeah, these three different uh, layers of concepts, uh, if you like, then there is the, the important um, in interaction between them happens in a very um, orderly way. And uh, you would see that, for example, if the user interacts with a, with a DOM, that uh, the, the controller gets uh, notified. And uh, of course, if, for example, you're adding a user, the controller might actually have a uh, use coordinate that uh, user's data, whatever came from the, from the DOM. And it's gonna uh, coordinate with the, whatever objects uh, is available in the, um, in the logic and try to just uh, manage that, right? Even if I'm saying a user, you probably will have a user object running in a RAM memory, and that represents the, the data, okay? Uh, you will see also the uh, interaction between a view and the model itself, and you see the uh, green arrow over here, which says observes. This is one important uh, feature of the Angular framework uh, specifically, and why I believe it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was very, uh, it became very popular. And the reason is because uh, we call this uh, data binding. And this feature in, in Angular actually allows that whatever object you have, uh, it gets uh, it gets um, updated, and uh, you don't actually have to code uh, or, or deal with it yourself uh, when, whenever the user um, is trying to edit some some data. So and then you can see uh, those uh, changes being reflected live at the data, uh, at the model, uh, or at the um, at the view side. Uh, but we will see later later on about uh, data binding. So um, yeah, of course, it is uh, the arrows here represent in general, in general um, way what they uh, how they how they interact. But uh, bottom line here is um, is that they could actually have more than uh, more than one operation, of course. So this is at the simplest level where the MV uh, control, uh, model view controller uh, software design pattern is, and Angular is based on. With that being said, we can start talking about Angular itself. And uh, well, when you look into the documentation of Angular, you will find this uh, graph. At first sight, it's very intimidating because, uh, well, first of all, we don't know this uh, wording, these concepts uh, yet. So uh, yeah, don't worry because that's kind of our task in a in a in a um, step by step. We're gonna uh, understand, make sense of these uh, um, concepts uh, and uh, graph uh, that we have here. Make, make make sense of it. Okay. So let's get started with. Um, with a simpler uh, graph, and uh, yeah, what's uh, when you think about an Angular application? Well, I have my browser, and and, and you know that is an SPA uh, application. So uh, you should think about modular applications. And what does that mean? That everything in your Angular application is a very nicely uh, organized uh, code, and uh, the way of organizing that code is into a, a module. So if this was a house, you should think of a module of a um, a um, bricks. You know, when, once you put uh, the house in place, you need a lot of bricks and the result would be a, a, a nicely a built uh, house. Same is happening here. Every module is, uh, is a container, so to say, in which you put a lot of code, different uh, type of, uh, um, of uh, classes, uh, services, components. We will see that in a moment. So module is a container for that, uh, for that specific code. And um, yeah, that is the magic of uh, Angular. You don't need to be worried about the wiring of this module. You don't need to be worried about the uh, wiring uh, of the code and classes that you will put on each container, on each module, I mean, because these guys are like magicians. I like to call the, each module a magician because they know how to do things and they're gonna make sure everything gets wired and coordinated super nicely. So me as a developer, I only worry about the, um, yeah, the business of my uh, application. So I don't need to be worried about the, it's like you are being Batman and the robin tasks, you have a robin for that and each module would be your robin if you like. 
Uh, important to say, every uh, application at least must have a uh, module. And that's called the root module or app module. When you look at the skeletal app that you are supposed to have already, you will see an app module uh, file. That is the root module. And that is important because it enables the, the bootstrapping process of uh, the whole uh, application. As I already said, uh, they can contain uh, component service providers and uh, yeah, there are many, many uh, different uh, other code. So uh, we will see as the um, weeks uh, advances, you, we will see uh, all those uh, concepts uh, or most of them. Um, for as important to mention is probably you're going to code, uh, for our practical, you're going to code only uh, in, into one module. You will be using different modules, that's also true, but uh, most uh, likely you're going to end up just uh, building in uh, into um, one module, one container, nothing else. Okay, so yes, it's totally possible to have a, a simple app and uh, only one uh, module uh, being your code space, if you like. Think about uh, yeah modules as I said different different contents for different things. You can think of a uh, feature modules for example. You would see that you will need uh, to use some forms in the um, in, in the future. Then there is a module already. Some some uh, ingenious people have already worked on that and created modules um, for you. So the forms module you will be using. And the only thing you do is like tell Angular hey I need this specific module, and you will be uh, capable to uh, to use that. So that's a great thing about uh, using a. Uh, uh, MVC, first of all, but also Angular uh, app. That is in a mod in, the software gets built in a modular way. So if I need a feature of you, we can just make business and then you can just uh, drop me that, uh, that module and I can use that specific functionality within my application. Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's more, more than enough for now. Let's look a little bit more. Uh, well, I already mentioned um, that a module contains a lot of uh, things and, and that's mostly code, of course. And, uh, but the, the, the right wording, the right uh, concepts are, are here. You can find it uh, in here in this graph. Uh, you can have components, which is basically a class. Directive, which is basically a class. Service is also a class. Value is exactly that. It's just a value. In this case, we have the, uh, the pi number. So uh, yeah, there you go. That's also possible. So think about this kind of uh, code when, when you think about a module, a container. Okay? Uh, most of the uh, time, we will be creating components uh, because the logic uh, goes uh, goes uh, in there and we need a component for uh, specifying something on the um, on the on the view as well because component actually defines the view we will see this uh, right in a moment service and directives we will look into into that uh, in later lectures okay let's let's talk a little bit more uh, about components because that's what you have to create uh, as soon as you have uh, your uh, skeletal uh, app so well, let's start with the with the uh, right hand uh, pictures here we see uh, this one here we see the hero component your component, the first thing you got to do is like think, um, think about the, the, the class that you're defining. Uh, that could be in this case, it's a hero, it could be a user, and that's the object itself. Uh, this needs to be represented and uh, viewed by the user, right? Where do you do that? Normally, HTML, we use that for, um, uh, for presenting uh, um, uh, the content to the, into uh, the browser, right? So we need the so-called template. Now, template, uh, you can for now think of the, as the portion of HTML that uh, it's related to a specific uh, component. So let's, and, and your result would be something like this enhanced uh, uh, presentation if you, you already know CSS and you can just add uh, CSS to that, of course. Um, but let's have a look at the, uh, at the left uh, uh, side of, the, of this slide. The component, as I already mentioned, is the class. So the a class, uh, um, it could be a hero, it could be a user, think of all data, you know, uh, with properties and some methods. And uh, yeah, where, where the logic uh, itself could be there. Uh, when you think about controllers in our MVC, this is, what, this is gonna be your space. This is going to be a, the, yeah, the space for, the, for your logic, your business logic. And in other words, if I uh, ask you, let's go to the uh, uh, controller and see what's happening there, what you should open, of course, is a component. We don't have something called a, a controller in, in Angular, but we have a component. And you know that the component holds the logic in, uh, in your application. Now, the component itself, it's a, it's a class. Think of it as a class. Um, also has something very, very relevant, and that's the metadata that we have here. And when you uh, look into TypeScript um, uh, handbooks, you will see annotations. And those annotations allow me to um, tell a little bit more information about the uh, components, about this class that you're being defining. Things like, A, well, when you look at into this component, you should uh, associate with uh, a specific template. So when you look at, think, uh, when you look at the component, you you are sure that that component is associated with a specific template. And that allows me to actually uh, see my object in a presentation layer. How, it's, uh, how, I'm, gonna, uh, how I'm going to um, visualize uh, my specific, uh, yeah, whatever logic I, I am uh, 
or whatever application data I am defining in the component, how's, how's that looking in terms of a presentation layer, the user, the DOM, in other words, once the HTML doc gets loaded into the viewport. So um, yeah, remember a component defines a view and the component is associated with a template and we use metadata for that using annotations. We'll see that in, in code. I think that's about the components. Another important, another important thing is uh, uh, that um, uh, there is at least a uh, component as well. And that is the root component, the same uh, holds for, um, for the modules. You have the app module. In this case, you have the root uh, uh, component. And uh, yeah, remember, if I say uh, controllers, which is the application data, you should jump into the component uh, uh, file uh, to show me the, your logic. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it gets associated with a template, which is the view, whatever data you're put, being uh, um, define, uh, defining here in the component. Yes. Now let's talk about another very important uh, concept, which is the data binding. And when we when we talk about data binding, think about your uh, the, the DOM and think about the, um, the the component where the logic is. Okay, so we have the application data, we have how the user sees that data, and that was uh, in the past a very very uh, tedious uh, work. You know, it was also error prone. Nobody wants actually to read that code anymore because it's very kind of uh, think of a spaghetti code. It looks like that. And uh, yeah, it was not a, it was not a, not so easy. And that's uh, well, you know, historically there is another uh, evidence to find why uh, motivations. And um, that was in '95. Brendan Eich, the, the inventor of uh, uh, JavaScript, he was uh, he actually created in a, I think in one or two weeks uh, JavaScript. The basic, uh, I mean, the whole uh, basic features of JavaScript was already there in a couple of weeks. And he was uh, not using object oriented uh, uh, language on purpose. Was just uh, using a prototype based uh, programming language. And uh, yeah, he wanted to solve. Remember, '95 is uh, is a year in which uh, the web is starting, and um, and everyone from the business industry wants to take a, a piece of uh, of this business. So well, things go very quickly, and nobody wants uh, and can predict the future. So what they uh, what Brenda Ike was just uh, coming with uh, certain features, you know, solving uh, the interaction in web pages because that's what JavaScript uh, was uh, invented for, just to, to to put some interaction in. Um, in your web pages and, and, and nothing else. So it was uh, created. It was it has evolved, and the, the web exploded. And uh, yeah, in the past, it was uh, these uh, bindings, uh, the, the, the DOM with the um, with the application data the data itself. It's uh, it, it was tedious. It was error prone. Too much code. Nobody wants to read that. And now we have frameworks. And Angular uh, framework has um, yeah. This is the way how they actually bind the um, or could bind application data with uh, with uh, with the DOM. The first form, first. Uh, a um, concept is uh, in terms of data binding, it's called property binding. And property, you know, it's uh, when you define your, your data, you define it in terms of properties and uh, methods over here in the component, which the logic is. And from there, it's getting pulled um, to, the, uh, uh, to the template, to the, uh, the, the, the presentation layer, the HTML uh, doc, if you like. And that is called property binding from component to template. Now, you also have scenarios uh, in which, uh, of course, you want to edit a user, for example, user's name, and that would be changing the data from the DOM to the component, right? And that is called differently. It's called event uh, binding. And, uh, well, you already know the, the kind of uh, um, events that we have uh, there. It could be a click, could be a, a mouse uh, hovering on something. Um, yeah, you name it, inputting of a, a, uh, of a text box and so on. So that's called data binding. Property binding from component to template, event binding from the template to or from the DOM to component. Now, how do we do exactly the data binding? So, um, I told you in the past it was like a spaghetti code. You had to uh, uh, manually uh, do this wiring, and that was tedious. We still have that uh, that code in many applications, actually legacy uh, web applications. So you can easily find on the internet uh, those kind of uh, codes if you like. But nowadays, the modern way of doing things is in a very, very straightforward. And the first way of, uh, and easiest way of binding a um, component template or DOM and uh, the components or application data is the first one, is this one. That's called interpolation. And you will see whenever, uh, whenever you actually see these uh, curly brackets, double curly brackets, and inside some uh, variable, some, uh, um, yeah, something like this. We see the object, uh, object's uh, property being accessed. It's going to be interpret, actually, because we are binding uh, through interpolation whatever in the, you define in the uh, components. So here is an example at the template, as you can see, HTML is here. At the template uh, level, we are defining 
uh, heading one and accessing a, a the user and name uh, property. This should be, uh, of course, uh, be defined in the component, in the logic. Only then you can access. Otherwise, you should expect an error. But that's the easiest way of uh, uh, binding. This is what you're doing here is already a binding uh, uh, mechanism, using a binding mechanism. A second um, way or form of binding template uh, with a component, it's the so-called property binding. We already saw that property means from the component. You see the errors here, by the way, from the component, uh, pulling the data and showing into the into the DOM. A property, well, uh, again, you are here showing into brackets. Um, the property. Um, this is an HTML property, as you already uh, can see, and you assign a value. This value must be a property, must be defined at the component uh, level otherwise of course you're going to get a, a warning an error or, or something so expect that so this item image you are I, I hope you already start seeing the the power of this uh, of angular itself so it gets assigned to this html property uh, and in terms of the html property you know you have this uh, html um, attribute so do not confuse the html property with html attribute and then we have the um, third uh, form of um, data binding and that's called event binding and you can actually see the difference between property and event not only at the direction how things flow but um, also in the brackets here you use uh, um, the brackets to enclose the property binding and here you use a parenthesis to actually accentuate that is an event binding uh, taking place how uh, you do this in, in an example here uh, at the moment that you click this button and you know that's a that's an event uh, you could say instead of using these um, uh, dom events uh, on click and uh, all those. I mean, actually, you can use the angular way of uh, denoting a. There is a click going on on this button, and the angular way is denoting uh, event uh, binding. So by just putting the parentheses there with the with the click uh, keyword. Um, so that's pretty uh, much angular. This is uh, angular. Don't forget. And in this case, we just simply uh, at the moment that we click this button, whatever button that is, uh, we are deleting a user. And then there's a fourth way of. Uh, of uh, binding the data. And this is a very interesting uh, way, a very useful uh, way and feature of Angular. And again, this is, this has uh, actually made Angular super popular, especially uh, in their uh, in their beginnings, you know, it's exploded in popularity because it was like so noticeable, this uh, feature. And it's called the um, the two-way data binding, obviously, because it, it can flow both uh, from both directions. And here's an example. Uh, since it's two-way data binding, you're gonna combine the brackets with the uh, Parentheses, denoting the property together with the um, with the event, and that means from component or from the DOM, the data being pulled or pushed. And uh, yeah, that is it. What you see here, ng model, we will see uh, later uh, later on uh, uh, why we have a ng model. You will see that that's a directive. That's a different concept. Uh, but for now, you can think of directives as uh, um, new HTML uh, tricks. You know, Angular teaches HTML or extends uh, HTML uh, possibilities. So that's uh, what it is. And in this case, all what we are doing is matching a, a specific or using a form. Remember, when you want to just recall any example on the web, when you edit a, um, a user, let's say, all the, the user's data, when you say, uh, when you want to update or edit the user's data, gets loaded into a form uh, based on the model. The model in this case would be user, and that's what you have here, ng model. So whatever form you have there is going to be loaded when you want to edit with the user's data. And then when you actually change the value, then the data is going to travel back to the application data, to the components. So that's, that way you have a, a, yeah, flow, the, the data flowing in both uh, directions. And that's why we have this ng model, okay? But that's mostly to, you be, to be using when, when you need to edit uh, some, uh, some model, some, uh, some data. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, that's it. I want you to practice with the data binding seed in, in uh, practicing with it, because then it's a, a little bit easier to digest what's happening. I leave here some bibliography uh, for you to, uh, to uh, yeah, keep an eye on uh, what, about the changes of uh, certain technologies. Uh, back when I was starting uh, with Angular, you know, we were in version one, and now crazy things have happened already. A lot of changes, and I constantly look into these uh, um, these links. So uh, about TypeScript, this one will teach you uh, in a very um, in a fast way about uh, all the insights about TypeScript. So, uh, but you you would see that it's very um, similar to uh, languages uh, that you already know, typed languages that you already know, it's like Java or C sharp. And um, yeah, that, that's it, guys. Thank you very much, and I uh, wish you uh, yeah all the best with your practical. See you in the next lecture.